Welcome everyone to Hands-On Data Analytics for Beginners with Google Collaboratory. My name is Thayi Delgado and I'll be your data science instructor for the rest of this course. I'm a Bay Area native with a computer engineering background who's worked with companies such as Apple and Udacity where I've been teaching data science and machine learning for a little over five years. So many of you might be wondering, what is data analytics? What does the course cover and why should I learn it? As the name implies, Data analytics is all about finding and extracting useful and relevant information from our data so we can make informed decisions. Say, for example, you're an administrator at your local community center, which offers a lot of popular courses throughout the year. In particular, you might be interested to keep track of the budget while following the number of enrollments for swimming classes. Perhaps you're inclined to believe that the number of enrollments throughout the year are evenly distributed. However, upon further inquiry, do you realize that most of the enrollments happen during the summer months? By using data analytics, not only will we be able to find and extract this information, but perhaps we'll be able to find ways to save money while still preserving high quality services for our residents. Not only will we show you useful ways to solve problems with data, but we're going to provide you practical tools to extract and solve these problems yourself. Specifically, we'll cover the Jupyter environment, which is a rich free open source interactive file format, which allows you to write text, add tables and links, run small snippets of code, to acquire data and generate stunning yet useful visual plots. We'll extend this further using Google Collaboratory, which will allow you to run your notebook online. One of the benefits of running notebooks online is that we don't have to worry about initializing all of our libraries in a single environment or through specialized hardware. Instead, Google Collaboratory will run on the cloud, thus this will make running Colab seamless across systems. The file can run on any computer with access to the internet without us needing to worry about enough memory or dedicated processors to do all the number crunching for us. In addition, Google Collaboratory comes with all the benefits of Google Suite, such as storing our notebooks online, as well as being able to collaborate with peers simultaneously without having, again, to worry about syncing the code or the data. Next, we'll show you how to load and work with data sources for multiple formats. Specifically, we'll cover a little of the CSV file format, Google Spreadsheets, and how to query from SQLite. Next, once you have your data loaded, we'll show you the NumPy and Panda libraries that allow you to summarize useful statistics. Say, for example, you have a large data set. It would be very cumbersome to calculate all this by hand or use a Google spreadsheet. However, by using NumPy and Pandas, we'll show you some useful tricks to summarize your data quickly and easily. Unfortunately, not all the time will your data be clean and easily formatted as you expect it to be. So we'll show you some useful tips so you can prepare and transform your data so you can get the useful information out of it. Specifically, we'll show you ways to identify outliers and how to deal with them so when you're summarizing your data, it's clean and presentable. Finally, we'll wrap up with data visualizations using Matplotlib. While it's nice to summarize your data, sometimes it's more helpful at times to provide a visual story so your peers can quickly and easily understand what's happening in your data. For example, maybe you might be trying to figure out who your customer segments are or how your budget is being spent within your department. As far as prerequisites go, we're assuming you have some basic programming background, primarily in the Pythonic programming language, which we'll be using version 3. While we don't expect you to have advanced mathematics, we do expect you to have some intermediate algebra and descriptive statistics, because we'll be using these libraries that use these ideas extensively. 